concerns are security. Number one is security. I don't want to be taking you to a place where we're not going to make it back, okay? <laughs> it's not without its risks. Of course there's risk. We're going into the wilds of Africa, but I think we've covered as much of the security as we can. The second concern is malaria. So we will be traveling with test kits and with Kawanta. I'm not too concerned about the, the Nile itself. It has got its inherent dangers, e.g. crocodiles and hippos. I expect we're going to have a lot of fun and bring back something unique that we can show the world and what people can expect to see there. The raw beauty of Africa. Rather oh, beautiful, isn't he? Yeah. And that's a northern white. It's lovely. Okay, and there we have the White Nile. The iconic rift. Wildlife is possibly the best ambassador a country can have. And South Sudan needs an ambassador because at the moment South Sudan is always thought about as a very dangerous, unsafe country to be in. It's not like that at all. There's no undercurrent of terrorism or anything like that in this country. Yes, there's cattle camp wars and little tribal fights that go on in the background, and it is politically a little unstable, but it's not a dangerous country for expatriates to be in. Why we want to get tourism going is it will promote investment. We have no economy here except for oil. Unless we get investors in here, in the tourist sector, which is the first step, and then we can get people come in farming. It has incredible potential, this country. Right now, we've got people coming in looking for minerals and things like that, but minerals are generally not the best thing for a country to survive on. Your fishermen and hunters are the bravest of all tourists. They'll go anywhere. So if we can get fishermen in here to catch big perch and experience South Sudan, it's the first step to promoting this country tourist-wise. Fishermen will go anywhere to catch a fish. So that's what this trip's about. It's us going to explore the Sud, which is extraordinary. We're driving to Bor, which is about two hours, say two and a half hours. And then we're getting on a boat. And if we go at normal speed, the boat will take us an hour to the island, but we want to trawl there, so we'll go a bit slower. Oh, well, look, we're on the Nile. We're on the Nile. And then we get to the island and put up our tents, theoretically, and get surrounded by islanders the culture of the fishermen on the Sud. They're amazing. They're totally not westernized at all. They build their own islands and they live solely on fish. The wealth of fish, the bird life, you'll see. How was your night, guys? Excellent. Did you sleep well? And Juliet, Mike, did you sleep well last night? I sleep very well. I'm called David Duke Nyang. I'm a South Sudanese. We want people to feel safe and happy when they come to visit South Sudan. When you come to a place like this, this looks warm. It's a beautiful, quiet place. And you can just be somewhere by yourself, just fishing. Here he's spinning. We 
went to a small island called uh, Agudir. Agudir is an island that belongs to the community of Byong, of Dinkabor. And we were well received by those fishermen and they gave us their home for three nights. Yeah, yeah. The guide, security, the cook, they all organized here. I'm preparing for dinner. Good morning. Did you sleep well, my darling? I did. Hi guys, so what happened? We went out earlier today for a good six hours from 6 a.m. till 12. We got a few tilapia, we got some good nibbles, but unfortunately no big Nile perch. And then we got rained on tremendously on the way back to camp. But it was good fun, it was good fun, yeah. yeah. I was been carrying my AK-47 and my pistol on full maximum alertness in case of anything. But thanks God, there's nothing. Absolutely. So when successfully we come back successful. That's always a good day. Yes. Well done. Well, thank you for looking after us. Yes. Did you sleep well last night? No, because the crocodile disturbed me. It was groaning by the side of the tent. And Kerry, how did you sleep? Like a log. Like, like a, a log. log. That's yes. brilliant. Yes. They reckon it was my snoring. He thought that was a crocodile. Everybody getting up and packing up, actually. There goes our camp. Hi. And our hosts. Hi. From that island, we were able to explore the Sud, the Sud Swamp. We went to these small lakes that had no human presence. So we were the only ones that were there with plenty of birds and obviously the fish underneath. So it was a lovely, a lovely trip. We had a fabulous time. It's beautiful out there. And having you along and everybody on the trip, you realize it's not unsafe. I mean, we went out there. Yes, we went with Juliet Mike as a bodyguard, but he was more a liaison. The people on the island were very welcoming. Now, that was just a deal struck by David Bowman to us, found an island, said, can I bring people here? And they were happy to have us. The fact we didn't catch a perch was uh, interesting, but we've since discovered that there is a run on perch. So we're going to go up there and give it a bash when the tilapia is falling and see if we can catch that big fish. But what a beautiful place. And I think it's a good way to start tourism and it's a good way to open up the Nile.